cartoon recaps here. Today I'm going to be starting a new animation series called, Soul Land. Spoilers ahead, relax and enjoy. The first episode begins with a young boy called Tang San, who's being pursued by some elderly people in his village. The show suggests that he must have done something to offend them. As the elders kept on chasing after him, we are shown their amazing village above the hill known as, Tang Man. Tang San defends the elder's attacks very easily, making them more furious. Realizing that the young boy is much more stronger and powerful than them, their pride is damaged. But unfortunately, more of the elders joins in the fight, and as they all successfully surrounded him, Tang San decided to surrender. Here we get to find out that this boy learned about some secret techniques from the library, which was considered as an abomination in the land. With the extreme hostility and hatred they had for him, Tang San is sentenced to death for infiltrating the Forbidden Library, and for learning prescribed skills. Being a man of dignity, Tang San decided to rather kill himself, by jumping off the mountains instead of dying in the hands of the elders. Immediately, Tang San pulls out his clothes, because he doesn't want to kill himself while wearing or possessing anything that is owned by the elders. Suddenly, he jumps up the mountains naked, and as one of the elders tries to rescue him out of pity, he fails. After Tang San's death, his soul started to go through different worlds, until he reaches a unique kind of universe, where he is reborn as a baby. This is actually like clicking on the restart bottom, where you have to start things from the scratch. This kind of universe is mainly occupied by the spirits of martial arts. As soon as Tang San wakes up, he instantly remembers everything from his past lives. What astonishes us the most is that he hasn't even forgotten the secret techniques that he learnt from the library. He started to train and practice this new skills on a quiet and deserted place, where no one but himself is seen. Later on, we find out that this kind of universe is called the Duluodalu, where everyone unlocks a special kind of powers at the age of six. That powers is known as the spirit soul, where people get to acquire different abilities by gaining spirit souls. Few moments later, a man enters their village, and we find out that he is a very high-ranked soul master called Su Yo Dao, who will be training the young kids on how to awaken their soul powers. This episode ended with the soul master, who showed up in their village to fulfill his purpose by helping kids awaken their powers. In this universe called the Dulu Odalu, people were educated in ranks. Ranks holders for 1 to 10 are seen as trainees, 10 to 20 rank holders are seen as soul masters, 21 to 30 are seen as the soul grandmasters, and finally, 31 to 40 are seen as the soul elders. And that was how people were ranked in this universe. The next episode begins as we see the soul master, making his heroic appearance in front of the children, the soul master wants to check their capabilities and energy. He claims that he has been to six several villages, but he has never seen anyone with a fully obtained soul power, and looking for someone with a soul power is the reason he came to Tang San's village. He reveals his powers in front of the kids by opening the door of a random hall. Su Yo Dao takes the children inside the hall along with Tang San, and leaves the elderly chief of the village behind, whom Tang San normally regards as his grandpa. But before he started to train the kids on awakening their soul energy, he shows them his own powers, which is in the form of a barbaric werewolf, making the kids so afraid, because of how bright and huge the werewolf was. Su Yo Dao casted a spell and creates a yellow shining circle, instructing the students to step inside the circle turn by turn, so they can unleash the energy inside of them. The first child who enters the circle is revealed to have a soul of a sickle, making the soul master to explain that whoever has the soul of the sickle, are really exceptional farmers, and will play a huge role when it comes to agriculture. But sadly the sickle powers cannot allow you in becoming a warrior, or a good fighter. Immediately the soul master started to test his soul energy, because it is the most important thing that has to be done before training the newbie kids. After checking the first child energy, it is revealed that the soul powers of that child is zero. Su Yo Dao briefly reveals that kids with no soul powers, are not allowed to train. But instead, they shall live the rest of their lives like normal beings. The soul master continue in checking the children abilities, but he kept on seeing powers that were connected with agriculture and farming. He sees a girl with blue silver plant spirits, and considers it to be the most useless abilities for a martial soul. Finally, Tang San, the main character, steps inside the circle. He discloses his powers, which is also a blue silver plant. But without their knowledge, his left hand reveals a tiny glowing hammer. But for some reasons, he doesn't want to let them know about his other power. The Soul Master is really disappointed, as he believes none of them are qualified to train, and sends them back to their various houses, but he tells Tang San to stay behind, because he sees something really exceptional about him. He examines his soul powers which is revealed to be at level 10. 
This kind of level is a very rare thing to find, which surprises the Soul Master. The Soul Master discovers that Tang San was born with a full soul powers and explains to him that people who are born with full soul energy are destined for a big responsibilities and will also have a very victorious future ahead of them. But Tang San is shown to be very confused because he doesn't know much about his powers. Su Yo Dao tells Tang San that soul powers from the start will only make him an immature soul, so he really needs to train harder so he can enhance the energy. He also explains that when a person reaches level 10, they are meant to own a soul ring, which will assist them in enhancing their powers. But without this soul ring, it is impossible to get past level 10. Since the soul master is at level 26, he already obtained two soul rings. Each after passing the 10th levels, soul rings does not only increase powers, but it also unveils a new ability in them. Suddenly the soul master decided to continue his teaching for another day, and leaves Tang San in the care of the village chief. The chief escorted Tang San to his house, where he angrily yells at his father for not being present in his awakening day. He also informs Tang San's father concerning his soul powers, and calls him a genius. When Tang San tells his father that his powers is a blue silver plant, his dad finds this to be really shameful. The village chief wants to take Tang San to a school in the city, where he is going to begin his trainings, and even volunteered on sponsoring all the expenses for the trip. But shockingly Tang San's father Tang Hao disagrees with this. And that was how this episode ended. Next episode begins as we see the village chief really angry at Tang Hao for not permitting his son Tang San on going to the city for his trainings. Besides this is a great opportunity, the village chief believes that Tang San can become a great soul master in future because he sees a great potential in him. But Tang Hao still disapproves and gives uncertain excuses so his son won't go for the trip. This words only makes the village chief more furious, because he really sees the future of a soul master in Tang San, and wants him to join in the trainings no matter what. Noticing how the chief was really desperate, Tang Hao started to feel he might have other secret intentions, and still doesn't change his mind, and even dismisses him. Just as the chief started to get out of the line while trying to convince Tang Hao, Tang San intervenes, and to settle the argument between them both, he tells the village chief that his father is right, since his abilities is just revealed to be a blue silver plant which is not a good martial soul. As the village chief was leaving, he tells Tang San to look for him in case his father changes his mind, due to the registration for the school will only expire in three months. Immediately the chief goes away, his father calmly questions him if he wants to be a soul master, but Tang San replies that he's very okay being a blacksmith. Tang San suddenly recalls when his dad made a promise to teach him on how to make farm tools, but his father instead tells him to show his martial soul. Tang San shows him the blue silver plant, but his father gets furious and as he was living, Tang San then decided to show him his other soul ability, which is in form of a hammer. Suddenly, a flashback is shown, when we get to find out that Tang San mother also has the blue silver plant. But she died, by sacrificing herself for Tang San and his father from invading enemies. After taking a look at Tang San's soul in form of a hammer, his father hugs him as he realizes that his son has a twin martial soul. Immediately, Tang Howie started to teach his son on how to forge farm tools, and hammering skills. After the both of them spent some moments together, his father who was really impressed with his abilities decided to permit Tang San on going to the city with the village chief, so he can further his trainings on being a soul master. His father suggests to him to use his hammering skills in working in a blacksmith shop, so he can raise money to take care of himself, and as well fund his school expenses. He also advises Tang San to never reveal his true powers to anyone, and warns him to never use his hammer unless he's in danger. The next day, we see the village chief taking Tang San to the school and as soon as they finally arrived at the city, the episode ended. The next episode begins as we see the village chief and Tang San, who has finally arrived at the school where Tang San will be training. They were about to enter, but a security guard stops them, as they are people from another village, so he doesn't trust them. Even when the village chief brought out a proof, the security officer threw it away saying it is fake. As he was about to push the village chief away, Tang San stops him, and threatens to harm the security officer, if he lays a hand on his grandfather. As a fight was about to begin between the both of them, a well-dressed man enters, and by the way the security guard respected him, it proves that he is a man of high authority. The man asks the village chief to show him his certificate and immediately he confirms that it wasn't fake, he politely apologizes to them on behalf of the school. After a few discussion the chief decided to return back to the village, leaving Tang San in the care of the master, who also scolded the security guard concerning his attitude towards them. On their way inside the school, the man tells Tang San to always address him as a master. 
the master already knew that Tang San has a twin martial soul powers, making Tang San so shocked, but he was able to find out from the certificate the village chief brought to him. The master explains that he has received many certificates from a lot of kids with blue sliver plant, but only 6 out of 647 of them have soul powers. But among them none of them has more than level 1 soul powers only for Tang San, whom his soul powers exceeded them all to over level 10. After realizing the wisdom of this man Tang San bows down to him three times, and begs the man to accept him as his disciple. But the humble master smiles and kindly tells him that he should bow like that only when he encounters his parents, or the king. Immediately, the master takes Tang San to a teacher that will help him with his registration into the school, and goes away. After the teacher arranges everything for him, he shows Tang San his room in the school where he will be staying. As soon as Tang San opens the door, a student started to attack him. Tang San blocks and dodges every of his attacks, but still the guy doesn't give up. Until Tang San decided to fight back, and easily pins the boy down to the ground, making the other students really shocked and impressed. Tang San was like, why did you attack me? The boy introduces himself as Wang Sheng. He is the boss of the hostel. Him and the other students already seems to like Tang San, because he showed mercy, and even announces him as the new boss of the hostel. But Tang San disapproves this, because he is only here to study, and not being their boss. Suddenly a girl enters the room, and that was how this episode ended. The next episode begins as we see a girl, who also recently registered in the school. She was also instructed to lodge in the same room with the other students. Mixed gender is allowed between them for now, because they are still kids. This girl's name is called Xiao Wu. We find out that this hostel has a rule, which is the new students must showcase their martial soul abilities. And since Tang San defeated the boss of the hostel, he is now the new leader. Now as the new boss, he must fight with any new students that comes in other to test their abilities. Xiao Wu calmly accepted the challenge on a friendly match with Tang San. When the fight between the both of them begins, we see them displaying excellent combat against each other. It appears that this girl is really skillful, which gave Tang San a really tough time in the fight. She dodges every of his attacks so easily, and after a very fierce fight between the both of them, Xiao Wu finally landed a blow on Tang San, making her the winner in the match. Tang San is really so shocked on how a girl could be really so skillful and tough. According to the rules, she is proclaimed the new leader of the hostel, as she defeated the former boss, Tang San. Xiao Wu questioned Tang San the level of his soul powers, and he replied saying, he was born with a full soul power, which shocks everyone, and even makes Xiao Wu to be more interested in him. As Tang San started to tidy up his bed, Xiao Wu says that she didn't come with a bedding, so she suggested that they should join their beds together, so they can both share his bedding. A few moments later, Tang San and his roommates are taken to the cafeteria, so they can have their lunch. We find out that the first floor is where the poor people eat, while the second floor is where the rich people eat. Back at Tang San village, we see his father once again, who is forging some farming tools. Suddenly he started to get memories of Tang San, and all the moments they have spent together, which reveals that the poor man is already missing his son since he left. Tang San sees his master once again, which makes him so excited. After their meal together, he takes Tang San to a library, and proposes that he should show him the other martial soul he has. As Tang San reveals his hammer to him, the master is really astonished, but he advises him not to reveal this kind of powers to anyone, and also warns him never to put a soul ring on his martial soul. Tang San remembers when his father told him the same words, and he is so curious on knowing the reason. But the master promises to give him an explanation the next time they meet. The master explains to him about what a martial soul is all about. A martial soul is divided into two categories, which is called the beast soul, or the weapon soul. The beast soul is a combination of both a human, and a martial soul. While as for the weapon soul, it is something that needs to live the body to be used. And this kind of soul is used for providing support, compared to the beast's souls. And that was how this episode ended. Thank you for watching guys, I will be recapping the next part soon. If you don't want to miss out, please subscribe to this channel. And keep watching. Bye.